If you were following along in the previous lesson, we drew some basic shapes, rectangles, ellipses. We looked at some of the tools that allow us to make adjustments. Now we're going to move on to some more advanced shapes. And don't be scared by the word advanced. We still just click and drag with our mouse to draw these shapes, but the end result is a more advanced shape than a basic rectangle or ellipse. So if you're jumping to this lesson, you need a brand new document opened here. You can click the New button up here. I already have a document from the previous lesson. If you were following along, follow with me down to the bottom and click the plus sign after page one of one to insert a new page. I'm going to go up to my pick tool here. This gives me a property bar that allows me to change this over to landscape. So I want to do that. Now I've got a nice new drawing area. Like I said, if you skip to this lesson, just click your new button and change over to landscape to start with a new canvas. All right, we're going to explore some of the more advanced tools now by going back to our toolbox. And just below the ellipse tool where we left off in the previous lesson is our polygon tool. And when we click on that, all we have to do is come over to the drawing area, click and drag to draw our polygon, which happens to be by default a five-sided polygon or a pentagon. Now it can be wide and short. It can be tall and skinny. If you hold down your control key while you're clicking and dragging, it will be five equal sides in our polygon. Let go of your mouse button first, then the keyboard to keep that shape constrained. Now, of course, this is just the default. If we go up to our property bar, we do have some options. And we will get into modifying your objects a little bit later on even in this chapter when we get to the shape tool. But right now you can see there are some simple changes we can make. If you want more than five sides, maybe you want to draw a stop sign. Well, you need eight sides then. So you bump that up by clicking the up arrow. Or you could come in here and just highlight what's there and type in eight. When you hit return or enter on your keyboard, you get your octagon. So for us doing our stop sign, we probably just have to rotate this slightly to have a good head start. We'll be talking about rotating and so on later on as we move through these lessons. So there's our basic octagon, which we created using our polygon tool. Notice the polygon tool does have a little black triangle in the bottom right-hand corner indicating there is a fly out. There's some more tools in here. So when I click and hold this down, look at that. We've got star, complex star, graph paper, and spiral. So let's go through these. We'll start with the regular star. So when I click on the star, it's now attached to my pointer. I just have to click and drag across and down. Again, I can adjust the width and the height, make it tall and skinny as I click and drag, or if I want to constrain it so it's perfectly symmetrical, hold down your control key, click and drag, and when you've got the size you're looking for, let go of the mouse button first, then your keyboard button, and you've got your star. Again, the default is five points, but we can manipulate that. There's the five there. If I wanted to create more of a star burst, I might want to bump that up, clicking the up arrow. I'm going to go all the way up to 12. You can see that star burst now. I can also adjust the sharpness. Notice it's set to 53 here for me by default, meaning that the difference between the point at the bottom and the top can be adjusted to create some sharpness. So if I bump that up, you can see now that the points are actually getting pointier and sharper, therefore. Of course, I could come in here and just type in any number I want. I'm going to type in 65 and hit Enter. There we go. There's my starburst. Start doing some cool things with that, like node editing. We'll do that later on in this chapter, adding some color and special effects, all of that to be done as we move through these lessons. Right now, we're just drawing the shapes, though. So let's go back to our toolbox. Click that button, hold it down, and check out the complex star. Now, the complex star is something that can be drawn just by clicking and dragging that otherwise without this tool would take a lot of manipulation of the nodes in a regular star or even a polygon. But now that we've got the complex star, we just click and drag. And if you want to constrain, hold down your control key and let go of the mouse button first. And you can see really, if I look closely at this, it's really just three triangles, one on top of the other and rotated slightly. So I could have drawn that myself by creating those triangles and rotating them. But thanks to the complex star, I didn't have to do any of that. And it's very easy to adjust the number of points. If I want to bump that up or bump it down or type in the number I'm looking for, I'm going for seven. And adjust, just like we could with the regular star, the sharpness if we wanted to. We can bump that up or down. You can see two is about as high as I can go with my seven points here. 
Of course, I can do a lot more with node editing. I'm just kind of building you up for that lesson, which happens at the end of this chapter. Let's go back to that same tool now, the complex star tool, and go down to one called graph paper. Graph paper allows you to create a grid. Now you could create a grid to create a checkerboard or whatever it is you want to do. It'll look like a table, but this is not the table tool that's new to Corel Draw X4. This has always been around. This is our graph paper. When we click and drag across and down, we're going to see our grid. Now I've used this before, so you can see the number of columns and rows for me is six and six. You might have something different. I'm going to press delete to delete it. And I'm going to change this now to, I'm going to go down to four and three. So I've got four columns and three rows. Now when I click and drag, you can see that's exactly what I get. That might be your default. But like I said, if you've used it before, it remembers your last settings. I'm going to bump this up now. Let's go the other way. All the way up to 10 by 10. And now when I click and drag, look what I get, my 10 by 10 grid. Very easy to do, just click and drag. And of course, using your control key, you'll get that perfect square. I'm going to hit delete to remove it. Hold down control, click and drag, and that's a perfect square now made up of 10 rows and 10 columns. One more to check out here. I'm going to click and hold my graph paper tool now down, go down to the spiral, and I'm going to just click and drag over here, holding down my control key to draw that spiral. This is something in the past you could draw manually. You can still do it, but of course it's going to take a lot of pinpoint accuracy to draw a line that's curved like this. You probably have to do a lot of node editing and so on, but with the spiral, just click and drag to draw it. You can also adjust how complex the revolutions are. If you want to bump that up, for example, let's try that now. Click and drag. You can see as I hold down my control key here to keep it perfectly symmetrical, that's a little more complex than the first one I drew. I'm going to go back to my pick tool here and just create a little bit of room by clicking on my grid down here, my 10 by 10, and hit the delete key. I've got some drawing space because I do want to show you one more that's kind of cool. It's hiding up here above our rectangle tool. Not the smart fill tool, we'll check that out later, but if we hold this down to access the flyout, it's called smart drawing. If I click on that, I get a pencil now for a pointer, meaning I can sketch this out. This is really handy if you use a tablet PC and you've got a stylus. Now all you have to do is just sketch out the shapes and according to some shape recognition technology built into this, the shape you're after will be drawn for you according to what you sketch. And of course, look up here on our property bar, we can adjust the level of shape recognition and even the smoothing of our curves. So if, for example, if I'm not very good with my mouse at drawing a perfect circle, I might want to set this to the highest level. And now I'm going to come over here and try and draw a circle. Now it's just very important. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle, but it does have to join up at the end. And when you let go, you can see mine was just a little bit too off. So I would do some node editing here. Let's try a triangle up, down, and over. When I let go, that's better. That's a nice three-sided triangle. Uh, rectangle, click, drag, cross down, and back up. And of course, it has to join up. And if it doesn't quite, we've got the highest recognition level set, and I get a nice looking rectangle. I'm going to try once more with the circle. You can see how rough that is. I ended up with a square there. It's very rough with the mouse. If you've got the stylus, it's a lot easier. I'm going to go back to my pick tool, and I'm going to marquee select all of these by clicking and dragging across. Hit my delete key. Don't want that one either. Now I've got a bigger drawing area. I'm going to go back to my smart drawing tool and with a bigger area. Let's see if I can do that circle or ellipse. Not bad. It takes a little bit of practice, so I encourage you to try this out with your smart drawing tool. It's a great way if you need to sketch things out to create the shapes that you're after. Maybe you're in a meeting and you're doing a drawing. You can even do arrows, for example. If I click and drag a straight line and create my arrow and let go, it creates a nice looking arrow for me. 
And of course, you do have your property bar for smoothing. You can even adjust the thickness of the lines when you draw them like I just did for that arrow. Lots of options and we're going to continue to use these tools as we move through the upcoming lessons. But of course, the shape tool is going to come in very handy for editing the nodes within a shape. Just before we get to that though, we need to talk about perfect shapes and drawing lines and curves. So we're going to start in the next lesson with our perfect shapes collection.